How do we know how far away the moon is? We can measure it now with lasers, thanks to NASA's Apollo missions and the USSR's Lunokhov missions of the 60s and 70s. Both of those programs left a special type of mirror on the moon called a retro reflector. It acts a little bit like um, a cat's eye in the middle of the road at night, always reflecting light directly back in the direction that it's come from. This allows us to fire a laser at the moon and have the light bounce back at us. And since we know the speed of light in the laser, we can then work out the distance to the moon to extreme precision using the simple formula formula, distance equals speed times time. Before we had these special mirrors or even radar capabilities, which you could measure the distance of the moon with, but it was a lot more difficult because the signal was a lot weaker by the time it got back to you. How did we know how far away the moon was? How did the ancient Greeks know how far away the moon was? Because it could be that the moon is very close to us, just very, very small in size, or very far away, but much larger in size. And it would still look the same size to us on the sky because of perspective. Well, the first attempt known to have been successful at this was way back in 150 BC by the ancient Greek astronomer Hipparchus. And he cracked this problem by observing a lunar eclipse where the moon passes behind the Earth from the sun's perspective anyway and goes into the Earth's shadow. And he combined his observations of the lunar eclipse with everybody's favourite part of maths, trigonometry. <laughs> it's actually a really fun experiment that you can recreate at home today with the kids or without the kids if you're just a big kid like me. Plus, it's a really neat little bit of science history and you know I love my science history, so let's dive into this. Now, during a lunar eclipse, the moon passes into the Earth's shadow, which is circular because the Earth is round. And so when the moon starts to pass into that shadow, you see the edge of it, the curve of it, cast onto the moon's surface. But if you follow the shape of that curve, you can actually draw out a circle for the full size of the Earth's shadow, and therefore the size of the Earth if it was at the same distance as the Moon. We've actually just had a lunar eclipse that was visible across much of the Americas, Europe and Africa on the 16th of May. But don't worry if you missed it, you can literally grab any image of a lunar eclipse that you can find, either one you've taken yourself or one from the internet, where you can see that curve of the shadow, and you can use that to figure out the full shape of the Earth's shadow, either with a homemade compass of a pencil and a piece of string, or you could do it digitally on your computer. And then you just need to measure the total width of the moon and then the total width of the size of the Earth's shadow that you drew, whether that was with circles on your computer just comparing point sizes, or if you've printed something out and using a homemade compass, it's literally the width of the moon measured with a ruler and then your length of string measured with a ruler, but times by two, because if it's a compass, it's giving you the radius and not the full width. With those two numbers, you can work out the ratio between them, the relative size of the Earth and the Moon. And this is just what Hipparchus did back in 150 BC-ish. And he estimated that the Earth is about two and a half times wider than the Moon. So that ratio gives you the relative size of the Moon at that distance and the relative size of the Earth at that distance. And it's the exact same ratio for their real sizes as well. So if you wanted to know, okay, well, what's the size of the Moon? You would just need to know the size of the Earth. So today, if you're doing this experiment yourself, you can very easily just look up online what is the diameter of the Earth, and then you can plug that number in and get out a diameter for the Moon. But of course, the ancient Greeks couldn't exactly do that. Now, Hipparchus actually left all of his numbers, his working, in terms of, you know, the size of the Earth. So the Moon's size was expressed in terms of, like, the Earth's radius, and the Moon's distance was expressed in terms of the Earth's radius. But actually, another ancient Greek, Aristosthenes, had actually managed to get an estimate for the radius of the Earth back in 200 BC. Eratosthenes had once again used geometry to work out the angle between two locations. Syene, where sunlight shines straight down water wells at a certain time of day, and Alexandria where it didn't, and it only hit the sides of the well. He worked out that the angle of the sunlight was around about 7 degrees to the vertical in Alexandria, so reason that the two cities were 7 degrees apart on the globe. So if he times the distance of the two cities by 360 over 7, it gave the Earth's circumference, and then knowing that the circumference of the circle is equal to 2 pi r gives you the radius of the Earth. But whatever units you decide to use if you're doing the experiment, whether you keep it in modern day kilometers or you use Earth radii just like Hipparchus did, what we can now do is crack out the trigonometry. 
We can then draw a right angle triangle between the center of the Earth, the center of the Moon, and the edge of the Moon, with this angle here being half the angle that the Moon takes up in the sky. So the sky is a full 360 degrees around when we look at it, and the Moon takes up a fraction of that. It's around about 720ths of the sky all the way around, making the full Moon around about a half a degree across. And so half of that angle means that it's around about a quarter of a degree. So the tangent of that angle, a quarter of a degree, then is equal to the radius of the moon divided by the distance to the moon. You can then rearrange that equation to get the distance to the moon is the radius of the moon divided by the tangent of 0.25 degrees. This is pretty much what Hipparchus did as well, and he got a value for the distance of the moon at 61 times the radius of the Earth which is pretty remarkable because today's modern values put it around about 60.3 times the Earth's radius on average, remembering that the moon's orbit isn't a perfect circle, so sometimes it is further away from us and sometimes it is slightly closer, but on average its distance is around about 60.3 times the Earth's radius. But I think it's really incredible that, you know, with just a little bit of geometry and a touch of trigonometry and by paying attention to events like lunar eclipses, you know, anyone, even a kid with a pencil and a piece of string can estimate the size of and the distance to the moon. Before we get to the bloopers, a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this week's video. Brilliant is a website and an app that is an amazing tool for learning about concepts in science and maths in an interactive way. Essentially, you're learning by doing, by immersing yourself in a concept, which is personally the way I've always learned best. They have a huge range of courses across science, maths, and computer science that allow you to learn at your own pace in your own time, whether you're at home or on the go. If you're interested in finding out more about how the ancient Greeks determined the sizes of the moon and the sun and that the earth was round, or even the way the distances to stars was first measured with parallax, then check out these sections at the beginning of their astrophysics course that take you through the explanations and also get you to do the calculations yourself as well. So if that sounds like fun, head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky, or you can click on the link in the video description down below and you can sign up completely for free. Plus the first 200 people that go to that link are going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now, roll those bloopers. Ideally you'd put paper down, but apparently we, we don't have any paper in this house. And also, the only string we have is cotton twine. And he combined those observations of lunar eclipses with everybody's favourite part of maths, trigonometry. <laughs> I feel like I'm on like, I don't know, like Sesame Street or something like, trigonometry. Had already managed to estimate the size of the Earth. Eratosthenes, Eratosthenes. Oh, we've been here before. Eratosthenes, Eratosthenes. <laughs> Eratosthenes. <laughs> but actually another ancient Greek, Eratosthenes, I can't say it like that, that's how I remembered it last time, Eratosthenes. <laughs> you gotta say it all smushed together, Becky. Eratosthenes. <laughs> oh, I've just realised I never checked the pronunciation of Hipparchus. Uh, I bet someone in the comments is gonna spell it out phonetically for me and it's gonna turn out it's pronounced like Hipparchus. I can measure the distance of the Earth's own moon. Somehow I'll draw a circle.